What is up guys, Max here, and welcome back to another After Effects tutorial. So, in today's tutorial, as you've already seen, we're going to learn how to make this little icon animation, which should go over some basic topics on how to make stuff like this, and give you an idea of how to do it going forward. So, let's just jump right into it. So, already inside of After Effects, we have this animation. And if you play it out, it's really simple, just based on shape animation. Now, there's a couple different ways you can build an icon like this. You can build it all in After Effects, or you can create the icon inside of Illustrator and bring it into After Effects to animate it later. Now, we won't be covering the Illustrator portion of this tutorial, but we will be doing it all in After Effects today. So, let's just jump right into it. First off, something like this. Um, this composition right here um, inside of After Effects is around 800 pixels. So, let's do a new composition. Composition, new composition, just like that. Let's do a thousand pixels wide and a thousand pixels high. Frame rate, make it 60 because that is a super helpful frame rate with animation. It's great to export that. And duration, oh, it does not have to be long at all. Let's do five seconds. So, okay. Boom. First thing we need is to build this icon. So, first off, we're going to need a shape. So, up here at the top, you'll see this little shape icon right here. What we can do is hold and click and hold and click it down to rounded rectangle tool and once we do that we can hold shift on our keyboard and drag out a rectangle or a square in this sense to make our initial shape that we'll be using now what I would do is once it's made is to make sure my anchor point and all that good stuff is in the center so grab my anchor point tool right here hold command and ping it to the middle just like that switch back to my pointer tool now drop down on the rectangle options rectangle path and let's do our roundness down here. Let's round it off a lot more. I think it looks nice that way. And just to go ahead and give it some color like the old one, let's take the fill and make it red. All righty then. Just like that. Okay, so next up, if we look at our original animation, the shape pops out like this, and there's a shape on top. It's like the same thing, but white and red right here. So what we'll do is actually duplicate this composition and change it to white. All right, so what we're gonna do now is actually draw out a new shape. We'll make it yellow because it's gonna be our masked shape. And draw this out, just like that. Do that again. Let's make it a little bit off orange or green or something. And draw this out to about right here. And that should be good for us. So what we'll do now is take shape layer 3, which is the yellow one, keep it on top of shape layer 2, take shape layer 4, put it on top of shape layer 1. Just like that. Alright? Now let's take these two and change them to yellow. So we know that they're they're uh, the uh, track mat layers. And we'll go to shape layer 2, alpha mat shape layer 1, and then go alpha mat shape layer 4 right here. Alright? Now what I just did was I used the track mat module inside of After Effects to reveal the shapes only through the shape on top of them. So the red shape only shows through the shape right here, so it's only showing through this shape. And shape layer 2 is the white shape right here, it's only showing through this shape up here. So only this portion of it can show because it's under the shape on top of it through track mat. And if you don't see your track mat option, like always I go over this a lot. Um, if it's not there, what you'll do is in this little bar up here for After Effects, you can right click in the gray space, go to Columns, and go to Modes, which opens up your Track Mat option. Alright, so now we need to make this little gap that we saw in the original Play Video content right here. Really easy. What we're going to do is just grab Shape Layer 4, which is our matted shape, and drag it down to create the gap right here. Alright. Now, first off, we can see where it pops out in a weird way. So it scales up like that and boom okay so we need the red shape to scale so what we're gonna do is grab our anchor point tool and move it up to about right here we want it to scale out from about right here I think that'll look great click S on your keyboard unclick this little chain link option right here which is gonna let us scale this shape disproportionately and let's uh, go ahead and uh, keyframe the scale, go back in time, and take it down on the Y to 0. Oop, not 87. We want it to be 0. Sorry. 
so it scales like that. And we want it to be really fast, so like, boom, boom, boom. All right, but what was really cool in the original animation, it's really bouncy and does that. Um, to make it bouncy, I actually found this, this little bit of code right here that we can copy and paste into a code panel or a JavaScript panel, I think it's JavaScript, inside of After Effects to give it a bounce. So I'll leave a link in the description to download this little text file, and you can literally just copy and paste this, Command-C, or control C on a PC and um, what you're gonna do oop, don't worry about saving it we're fine um, is you're gonna command click or option click I'm sorry option click this little hourglass right here which opens up your expression text and you can just paste that t um, that expression we just um, had in our little notepad and what it's gonna do is actually make this bouncy cool and you know, it actually might be a little bit too bouncy. So what we're going to do is actually right-click both of these, key from assistant, easy ease. And it should give us a nice easy bounce. So remember, if they're regular keyframes and you add your expression, it's going to be crazy bouncy. But if you highlight these little keyframes, add your expression, and go to easy ease, it'll be just somewhat bouncy. Awesome. So now on shape layer two, we're gonna actually hit P on our keyboard. And we're gonna end the position right here. So keyframe your position right here. Go back in time and move it down to about right there. Um, before, just like always, we're gonna um, add our expression. It should be up, that's it, yep. Um, right click both of these, keyframe assistant, easy ease. Just like that. And maybe we can like offset it a little bit so it looks kind of nice. That is pretty quick on the animation, so let's stretch it out just a hair. Look at that. Look at that. Looking great. So now we need um, we need these three dots at the top, a triangle, and a mouse to click. Really simple. So what we're going to do is go and do these three dots. So grab your um, shape tool up here, hold and click. Go to ellipse tool. We will drag out a circle like that. Um, grab the circle. Grab your anchor point tool and drag it to the center with your command or control click. Um, right now that the shape is that, so we want to change the fill to um, the red we chose with a picker. So click your fill color, click your eyedrop picker, and click your red. And we're going to click S on our keyboard. And it's scaled a good percentage of what we want now, so we need to actually scale it up just a hair. We'll do three. Yeah, three is good. About right there. Um, keyframe the scale, go back in time, take it down to zero. Um, option click our hourglass, use our exact same expression, so command V, and that should still be in there. We can kind of scroll up through this expression and actually see it's there, yeah. Um, and then keyframe assistant, easy ease. And what we'll do is test out this animation with a little RAM preview, just like that. So if we look at the uh, thing right here that pops out the little bubble you can kind of see in the ramp preview that it does it's not extremely bouncy it's just, it just kind of goes pretty quick after we made our animation just kind of whoop just like that and on the original if you watch they're all pretty quick and I mean just like that and I think what we can do is actually drop down on this scale and drop into our expression right here that we copied and pasted in and change the amplitude number to a larger number and it will make it larger when it pops out. So we take our amplitude amplitude, and change it to one because right now it's 0 0.2 which is a small bound or a small scale thingy. And now it scales larger or it kind of looks like it's a little more bouncy which is what we want. So that's pretty good. Then what we'll do is hit S on our keyboard, make this a little quicker Whoop, just like that. Um, Command D to duplicate it. Hit U on our keyboard to see it. Command D to duplicate it. Hit U on our keyboard so we can see it and move it down our timeline just like the last one. So we'll have three different ones that scale out. So move these two down. Then grab this last one right here and move it down to right there. That looks about right. So boop, boop, just like that. Just like the original. 
And we'll move it over, grab all three of these, and move them over to right here. We are well on our way to making a wonderful animation. A little too quick on these. Oh, too late. Let's move them down the timeline. And now we need the triangle. Really simple. Go back to your shape tool up here and grab your star tool. Drag it out. Ooh, it's a star. We don't want that. When you drag a star out like that, you just click down on your keyboard to change the number of sides, up and down to change the side number. So you can keep going up to a crazy amount of sides on a star, or you can just click, keep clicking down until it turns into a triangle. So hold shift on your keyboard. I actually would just kind of do like this. Yeah, shift is fine, and then it puts it out there right here. Then uh, hit um, R on your keyboard and rotate it 90 degrees. Do it like that. Take our fill back to white. And actually, let's take our our uh, anchor point and move it over to the you know semi center of the the triangle. It looks kind of in the center right there. Move this to that. Scale it down some. Looks about right. And click S on your keyboard. And keyframe the scale. Go back in time. Take it down to zero, like we've been doing. Then we'll click the hourglass right here. And paste in our, you know, our thing. If I can get, oh, there it is. And then highlight both of these. Keyframe assistant, easy ease. So, just like that. And all we need now is a mouse cursor and a click, and we're good to go. So, let's actually organize some of this project. We'll grab these three. And we will change them to pink. That's our little dots. This is our orange thing at the top. And now we need a cursor. So a cursor looks like this. We're going to draw one out. So grab your pen tool right here. And let's draw a cursor out. Wow, that looks awful. Okay, we kind of drew, drew an okay cursor out. But what we're going to do is fix it. So we'll grab it. Um, drop down on our shape layer, contents, shape, path, and now we can actually like hold shift and click on one of these little anchor points and turn this into a, you know, a decent looking cursor. It's starting to look a little better. It's not terrible. How does the original look? I think we did a little bit. Oh, it's more triangly and less thingy. Okay, so we can we can do that. We can do that. So grab our path again. Shift, take it in. Take it in. And do that. This looks pretty good, right? I mean, I think we're okay with this. That's one way to make a semi good looking cursor. Or we can just delete this and do it a different way, which I would do is take a triangle, drag out a triangle, like so, hold shift, like that, then drag out a rectangle within this shape by clicking shape layer 9 and dragging out a rectangle with shape selected, which just puts another shape in there. And boom, we now have a perfectly structured triangle shape. And we can go our rectangle, move it over some. Grab our poly star, which is our triangle, um, and go to contents, poly star, poly star path, uh, actually transform poly star, um, unclick the scale, and we can actually squeeze it together like that. And now it looks like a seriously good clicker. A little bit too click for me. Bring it down some right there. Hey, that looks wonderful. Let's do that. All right, cool. So we now we are mouse pointer. Let's call it pointer for our own sake. Um, click R on our keyboard to rotate it at some. Ooh, the anchor point's right here. So let's move the anchor point and grab it. Grab the anchor point and move it over to about right cha. And now if we rotate this thing, it'll rotate around the anchor point. So what we want to do is have a motion path of this, this uh, mouse pointer where it comes around here and clicks on this. Probably scale it down just a little bit. S for a keyboard scale. And it's going to go like that and click. So we'll start here. Boom, 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 boom. 
and PNR keyboard position and it's gonna go to here all the way from there and what we'll do is we'll grab this and give it a serious pull with our motion move this over looks pretty good I think this would be pretty nice look at our original real quick look at this one it needs to start somewhere around here kinda coming around this way and we'll do it real fast we'll highlight both of these easy ease and give it a look Ooh, that's much too fast we'll slow it down some just like that now how do we make it look like it's coming from behind the original really really simple so what we'll do is we'll go right here where it's completely off the grid you know off the object we'll duplicate this um, the top one we will do option bracket on the bottom one we will option bracket the other way and basically we'll put this under everything so it looks like it's coming out from behind it because it actually is and then it changes in one frame to the new shape which will make it look like it's going in front of it and what I think we'll do is actually to give it a little more depth we will go to layer layer style drop shadow now this wasn't on the original but I want to add it just because I think it looks nice opacity let's do 25% and what's going to happen is about right here we want the opacity to be full and right here we want it to be zero so it actually opacities itself up so we can see it on top of our uh, thing and what we'll do is change the angle a little bit about right there now we can see it click on top of that so up oh, one more thing we need the mouse to appear right here. So we'll take it, drag this layer down of the mouse pointer, and just like that. Now, if you wanted to change the motion of that path a little more, be my guest. But I think for the most part, it looks pretty good. Just like that. Alright, and the last thing is we need to do the click. So hit S on your keyboard, keyframe to scale, um, scale it down, and scale it back up to its 80%. So copy and paste this keyframe. Just like that. We'll stretch out this click a little more. I think in the original, this one also clicked in. Yep. So what we'll do is we'll grab our triangle, our good old triangle shape that we made, which is right here, and scale it with the click as well. So it's going to be click, scale down, and copy and paste this scale back up. And that is pretty much how you make an icon like this. Now, it's going to be a little different than our original. So if we actually go to this one and drag in our new one, we can see them side by side. Let's actually scale this one or scale this one down a little bit so it doesn't look too off. And we can go pick out the differences between them. The color's a little different, 
which is not a big deal. There's a little bit more timing between the animations. So the corners are a little more rounded. Yeah, besides the minute differences, which you can fix with timing issues and little things like that, that is how you make an icon for the thing. So, as always, I'm Max. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. Don't forget to sign up for the giveaway, and I'll catch you guys next time. It's been awesome so far, and I really enjoy you guys being here. And one more thing. If you want to download this little icon file, there's a link down in the description. Download it. No big deal. Take a look at the file. Have fun. Peace.